Andrew Wiggins isn't getting enough credit for the incredibly efficient season he's having. Just over a quarter of the way through the year, and Wiggs is shooting a career best by far, 45% from three-point range, attempting 6.8 of those triples per night, also a career high. Meanwhile, Jordan Poole continues to get targeted by the officials, as the refs simply aren't holding JP to the same standards as other players. Along with Maple Jordan's dominance, Stephen Curry's 30 points and 10 dimes fueled the reigning champs to their 10th win over the last 14 games. The Warriors now sit three games within reach of the number one seed out west. Before going in depth on all of that, just 9.4% of you watching are subscribed, so subscribe if you haven't already, leave a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and make sure you're fully up to date with the channel by following at Hoops on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks so much for your support. We talked about Steph not getting the three-point whistle in my last Warrior video when he was clearly fouled from beyond the arc multiple times. Steph continues to not hear a whistle when his landing space is disrupted, like on this wild closeout from Josh Christopher. But now I want to talk about something which has become a popular topic, the refs calling an excessive amount of carrying violations on Jordan Poole. When you compare the travels JP's getting called with to the ones Luka Doncic isn't getting called for, you see the bias against Jordan from the refs get embarrassingly exposed. Let's just let the beautiful game of hoops that we all love not get whistled down every few seconds because said officiating crew wants attention. On any of the plays in this video of Luka on your screen, if this was Jordan Poole, the play would have been whistled down immediately. I'm just glad this flashy dribble combo and baseline dime wasn't whistled down. Not only is Jordan Poole being held to a different standard by the three officials on any given night, but the numbers prove the reigning champions as a team overall aren't getting a fair shake either. Usually, a lack of aggressiveness is a reason for a team or player not getting the calls they want, but that just simply can't be the case for Golden State, considering the success they've been having. Over the last 12 games, the Dubs ranked 9th in offensive rating, 5th in defensive rating, plus 3rd in both 3-point and opponent field goal percentage. The Warriors are also 1st league-wide in assists per game, yet somehow ranked dead last in free throw margin. In terms of JP's production, it's starting to come around, as the 23-year-old Michigan product is averaging 25.5 points per night over the first two games of December. But more attention needs to be going to Andrew Wiggins, who undeniably deserves to make his second All-Star team in as many years. Golden State's been the perfect fit for the soon-to-be 28-year-old athletic shot creator, as in two and a half years since being dealt to the dubs, he's already become a franchise legend in the Bay. With Andrew's ascension into one of this game's best two-way wing players, the Warriors dynasty has a legit chance of going much further than just this season. This man's coming off a 36-point outing against Houston on the second night of a back-to-back, -back, where he posted the second most efficient three-point shooting outing from a Warrior of this young season. That says a lot when Stephen Curry's your teammate, as Andrew made a blistering 8 of his 10 three-point shots and 14 of his 19 attempts from the field overall. Damn efficient. Stapling the top-notch value provided by this man, Wiggs racked up 5 boards, 2 dimes, 2 steals, and a block. He was also a team best by far, plus 34. On the year, Wiggins ranks 4th among small forwards in plus-minus at plus 122, value which most evidently shows up in his length communication, and quick twitch rotations guarding the perimeter. Andrew's 10th at his position, just ahead of an elite stopper in Philly's PJ Tucker. One thing that isn't talked about with Wiggins whatsoever is his playmaking. After getting doubled on the fast break, here he drops a tough on the move over the head pass over the outstretched arms of Shen Goon to find Looney on the rim run. Out of a timeout, watch the read that Andrew makes as this wide pin down turns into an empty corner action. Moving on to what Wiggs is doing best right now, shooting deep range bombs. Andrew's release is extremely fluid and thorough in terms of the harmony between his upper and lower body movement. You have to keep a body on Wiggins at all times, and even with Bruno Fernando thinking he's there after a Steph coast to coast outlet pass, Wiggins knocks it down. A pretty decent closeout from Fernando, but that's how much space Andrew's opening up right now. He's going to hit it if you give him a few inches of space. Another factor making Wiggins the perfect fit in Golden State's system is his ability to move off the ball. Here, he fundamentally fills out the lane in transition, spotting up and knocking down an easy right corner catch and shoot. As Draymond fakes a dribble handoff to Poole and Kaminga clears out, Terry Eason falls asleep on the weak side, and Wiggins realizes that and elusively skirts around him on a wide angle. Green finds him. 
Watch this spicy Steve Kerr action where after Poole swings the ball to Looney, Draymond fakes the pin down for Steph, Green pops out to receive the swing from Kavon, and it's instead Steph setting a cross screen for Wiggins, who again displays savvy off-ball motion for the bucket. A much younger player on the roster, who like Wiggins, also fits in perfectly with the Warriors system, is Moses Moody. After Moody dropped 11 points in the win against Houston, which included making a season-high three triples, Steve Kerr spoke on his performance postgame, saying, quote, Moses is someone who I just believe in as a human being, and he showed why tonight. That takes a lot of character to come in off the bench with a lot of cobwebs and shake all those off and knock down big shots and play important minutes, so hats off to Moses, end quote. Saving the best for last, and I'm sure I'll be breaking down another Steph game in the film room real soon in an upcoming vid, Steph just dropped his 70th game of making at least 8 three-pointers, which is 47 more than the next guy. That said, you never hear anything about Curry's defense. But from the very first game this year back in Tokyo, I noticed that Steph was a lot more engaged defensively, and that's proven to be the case as the years progressed. Steph's already drawn four charges, and we're not even close to being halfway through the season. Last year, he only drew seven charges for the entire year. It's just crazy that at 34 years of age, he's laying his body out on the line. And the fact that he's drawing charges at double the rate than he did last year shows you that Steph's not wearing down in the slightest bit. Curry's aging like fine wine. The man's in the best shape of his life. Proving that, NBA trainer Brandon Payne spoke on one unnamed player who went through a workout with Steph recently, saying, quote, We've had a player who's still in the NBA go through the first five minutes, sat down on the floor beside the door for about 30 seconds, and went outside and threw up and was done. It was a good player too, end quote. Unfortunately, despite all the positives I just mentioned, the Warriors continue to get a lack of respect from the officials, but the dubs have quite simply had enough and are playing extremely motivated in large part because of that disregard. But for today's question, how many more years can Steph play for? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out and the top five commenters by December 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Today's Speaks winner is Omar Hassan, who says the most impressive part of the Lakers is obviously AD's play. If he continues to perform like this with minimal injury, the Lakers can actually make a deep playoff run. He went blow for blow with Giannis the other night, showing anything Giannis can do, AD can do better. I do believe this level of play can be maintained. Pause to read the rest of Omar's great take. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.